Alrighty, folks, and welcome to Brain Rotters. So, the new Eternals Marvel movie has premiered, you know, around the globe. There are some nice things to be said about the film. Personally, I haven't seen it, but I'm going to be reporting on how bad the reviews are for the new Marvel movie, and I'm going to be covering everything people are saying. Alright, so, first things first, we have to talk about, in comparison to Thor The Dark World and its 66% Rotten Tomatoes score, Eternals is sitting at the MCU's lowest 60% score. Now, I don't agree with Rotten Tomatoes with everything, but it's worth noting how content creators who were invited to the premieres themselves are all saying kind of the same things. So, the movie suffers with its scale in the sense that so much is apparently cramped into this movie that there isn't a lot of room to just breathe and flesh out the characters and the villain, and as a result, the pacing of the film can be considered, you know, at a boring rate of pace, and the action sequences being more bland than originally thought to be, so the overstuffing in this movie is caused by weak side quests, whereas the whole film should have been spent wrapped around the Eternals as a unit instead of spending so much time on separate adventures separately. I think the last time that a film did this was Joss Whedon's take on Justice League in which we remember that the movie didn't flesh out the characters and suffered from how overstuffed it was and really did hurt for the fact that DC didn't do solo lead ups to the film and instead came out swinging with a two hour film. Meanwhile a four hour Snyder Cut was incredible for making up for the original movie faults and develop the characters especially Flash a lot better so does Eternals suffer from breaking the Marvel formula of having those solo lead ups to Avengers level movies it, it seems so because Eternals didn't have those lead ups and you know a lot of people were begging Marvel to do something different to break their formula so maybe giving them something they're not used to is a bit negative and they are kind of at that negativity bias so there's two sides to that I am also seeing a universe understanding that Crow as a big bad is forgettable and really lame which is unfortunate because ever since The Dark Knight came out I think it's understood that every comic book adaptation every superhero film is as good as its villain we even know that the weeding cut of Justice League didn't give much depth to Steppenwolf at all so I'm thinking that with Eternals Crow might be one of those villains who are evil just to be evil which is incredibly underwhelming because from the trailers it seems that the Eternals are the most powerful beings in the Marvel Universe Icarus is literally compared to Superman in one, of the, in one of the trailers. So to give us a villain that can't contend with those standards or doesn't have a higher power level that is to be considered dangerous to these really powerful beings, well, then as an audience, we are literally watching the Eternals take candy from a baby. I do think because the movie has to develop all these characters that the villain did fall short of his own development. Hey, you made this far. You might as well subscribe if you're new as well as hitting that bell for notifications so you don't miss another video video just like this one. In fact, I've heard a lot about how this movie would have been better if it split into two movies. That way you can develop all these characters, including the villain, building up that suspense. And I also heard that Kit Harrington does not get any screen time in the movie as his comic book self Black Knight, which is fine, but I think maybe it would have been better if he was saved entirely, like his entire character for the next film. Because if this movie does bite off more than it can chew, you can have all this romantic drama between Icarus Cersei and Black Knight in the next film so that you can build Cersei and Icarus's bond in the first film then it will bring a little bit more conflict in the second film once that relationship is established and the audience can be on board with it and then enter Kit Harrington Black Knight character as Black Knight and kind of be that wedge in that relationship that he is in this movie and I think that it goes hand in hand with how reviewers are saying the Eternals interacting with each other is the highlight of the film so have the first film be about Eternals and their bond Bond as a unit no outside side trip with side characters you know because that takes away from the overall bond that the audience needs to sympathize with and get to know but that's just what critics and content creators are agreeing on we'll see how the movie plays out once the movie comes out for all of us I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on all these reviews do you think they're just review bombing it or what is the case here but this is just what people are saying. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I am intrigued on this one. I think it's highly controversial right now. So let me know your thoughts. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Take care now.